All right, what's going on guys, Stefan here. In today's session, what I really wanted to focus on was just keeping it very high intensity. So as you'll see in this video, I did a whole lot, but not a lot of rest in between. Majority of my session just focused around uh, one drill, which you'll see coming up. But first, just did a little warm up, 500 juggles as I usually do, and then got right into it. Just a little disclaimer, it was 90 plus degrees this day on turf, so my phone, which I used to record on, didn't last very long before it overheated and turned off, which is why I threw in some clips from a session I did a few weeks prior, but I pretty much did the exact same session as I did on this day. So if you're wondering why my cleats change or the weather changes or whatever, that's why. But I did the exact same drill. I lined up 10 cones in a straight line and then six cones kind of zigzagging, funneling outwards, and did quite a few different variations with and without the ball through this drill. With this drill, one rep was going all the way down, all the way back, and then finishing with a pass on goal. So I did two reps with the ball, two reps without the ball. With the ball, obviously one pass with the left foot, one pass with the right foot. I personally like just keeping things very simple. When I do a training session, I only do two or three drills max, but I do each one for quite a while. But I make sure I implement all different kinds of change of direction using all the different parts of the foot, which is why I go through this drill so many times. Like I said before, I did six different variations through this drill with the ball and without the ball. That's two rips each, so I went through this drill 24 times. And this was really the bulk of my session, and I wanted to keep it high intensity. I wanted to keep my heart rate up, so for rest, after I did one rep, I took about 10-15 seconds before getting into the next rep. And once I finished all four reps, two reps with the ball, two reps without the ball, I took a little bit longer of a rest, probably 45 seconds to a minute, and then just got right back into it. And it doesn't look like a whole lot. I'm not just all out sprinting the whole time, but once you do this drill for 30, 35, 40 minutes, you really feel it towards the end. Which is also important because once your legs start to go, you need to be able to keep control over that ball once you start getting tired. So once I finished with this drill, I moved on to the second drill, which unfortunately you aren't gonna be able to see because like I said, my phone just couldn't handle the heat. But it was more of a technical drill with the ball. It was that triangle dribbling to a pass that you guys may have seen in earlier videos. But that wasn't the main focus of the session. What you guys saw before was really the main focus of the session. And then to finish it off, I just did a little bit of fitness, again, with the ball and without the ball. I did five full field sprints with the ball. Once I got to the end, I took a 30 second rest before getting into the next rep, and then five full field sprints without the ball. And that was my session. And just in case you guys are wondering, that strap I'm wearing around my chest is a heart rate monitor. I use that to track my heart rate, uh, the length of the session, calories burned, all that kind of stuff. And it connects to my phone, so I will share these stats from this session screen right now as you can see I kept this very intense with a little rest you could see big spikes with my heart rate and then allowing my heart rate to come down for a little bit so I kept it high intensity really just focusing more on game realistic training where I'm not just going at a steady pace the whole time but rather going in bursts all out but it was a good session highly recommend giving this session a try all right just got back the plan for the next 45 minutes is relax before I go to the gym Cut up an orange, a lot of watermelon, just a big plate of fruit. Uh, just get a little something in my body before I work out again. I don't like eating too much before I work out, which is why I only had a two egg omelet before I trained this morning, just gonna have some fruit before I go to the gym. Most of my calories come later on in the day when I'm done working out. Um, that's when I have kind of the bigger meals. But I like working out on a small stomach, gonna drink two of these to rehydrate myself. Again, it was 90 degrees out there. I trained for an hour and a half. Lost a lot of uh, lost a lot of water, so just rehydrating myself. Yeah, go to the gym for about 40, 45 minutes and uh, take it from there. It's been about an hour of just recovering from the session before, so I'm gonna head off to the gym soon. It's gonna be another high intensity session, so I'm gonna take you through that entire workout. I uh, got my chest strap on too. I always wear the heart rate monitor, so I'll show you my stats. 
from this workout after the workout. And as far as my workouts go, both training with the ball and without the ball in the gym, a lot of you guys ask if I plan ahead of time or follow any sort of workout program. Yes and no. I don't really write down what I'm going to do each day beforehand. What I do is just think about it on my way to the gym or on my way to the field. I've been doing this long enough, um, training on my own and with teams. You learn a lot throughout the years and I can kind of come up with stuff off the cuff. I have an idea of what I want to uh, do and accomplish going into it, but I don't really write down everything I want to do beforehand. So same idea with this workout. I have an idea of what I want to do, a lot of kind of more explosive stuff, mostly with the lower body. But with that being said, I do know a lot of you need a specific workout program to follow something to either keep you accountable or if you just aren't sure about what exactly you should be doing. I do offer full programs on my website. The link will be down in the description below or just follow along with these videos. There's a lot of useful stuff in here that you could use in your own workouts. But let's go to the gym now and I'll take you through my full workout. All right, so in the gym now, after a 10 minute warm up on the bike and going through some stretches, I started off this workout with a little bit of a body weight and plyometric circuit. This is something that I actually learned from my U15 coach, I think. He would take us through this after training some days. So it's 10 body weight squats, going into 20 lunges, going into 20 jumping lunges, going into 10 squat jumps. So it's 10, 20, 20, 10, all back to back. This is awesome, especially if you're a younger player or just kind of getting into training. It really helps build that explosiveness. And like I said, this is something that I did at 15 years old a couple days a week. Like I said before I got in the gym, I wanted to keep this workout intense. I wanted to keep it explosive. So the next exercise I did was a single arm dumbbell snatch. This is more of a full body exercise, as you can see, but still having a lot of emphasis on the lower body. Because most of that momentum is coming through my legs. I'm not really pulling that dumbbell up, more so exploding through my legs off the ground. So I did eight reps on each arm before going into skater jumps. With these skater jumps, I took a half second pause landing on each foot, just focusing on that stability and sticking the landing. Next set of exercises, I did a single leg RDL, just maintaining my balance on one leg and keeping control of that dumbbell going all the way down and all the way up. I love doing unilateral exercises, which is just focusing on one leg at a time because as a soccer player, you're really always cutting or jumping on one leg. Straight after that, I went into another explosive movement, a plyo push-up, just using two dumbbells by my side. More unilateral stuff, a lot of balance, a lot of explosiveness with these next exercises. I started off doing a single leg squat on the bench. Really just focusing on that negative movement, that going down part, making sure it was slow and controlled, a little tap at the bottom, and then going all the way back up. After I did six reps on each side, this next exercise I did was a sprinter step up jump. We're just kind of focusing on the opposite, so instead of going down slow, I focus on going up fast. And same thing, six reps on each leg, driving all the way through with a little jump at the top. The third exercise in the superset was an eccentric pull-up. I just did a normal pull-up going up, but on the way down, I focused on the negative, that eccentric part. I counted in my head five seconds down, and I did five reps total. So five reps, normal pull-up up, five second countdown. Last two exercises, single leg calf raises, nice and simple, 15 reps on each side, and then I finished up doing hanging leg raises for the abs.
done working out, done training for the day. This is my post-workout meal, just a smoothie, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Workout was good today, training was good today, overall a good day. And I don't train like that every single day. It was intense today for both sessions. I had a video a while ago talking about how you should schedule your training between high intensity, medium intensity, low intensity. Go check that out to see kind of more how I schedule my training. This was a very intense day, so I'm just gonna relax the rest of the day, do some stretching, foam rolling later on. That's about it, but as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave this video a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Peace.